What's up, my friend? So one of the questions that we're getting asked a lot is rigging questions, right? What hook do I use on this bait? What jig head do I use on this bait? So Jeff and I thought it would be a smart idea to just do some quick, like, tutorials, some rigging videos on what we're actually using for certain baits. So we're gonna go around the shop, we're gonna find some of our more popular soft plastic baits, and we're gonna show you exactly how we are rigging them. So we're gonna start right now with Mega Bass swim baits. All things Mega Bass swim baits. So Hazardon Shad, Spark Shad, Mag Draft, the different sizes, exactly what hooks, what heads, how we're using them so that you guys can know what we're doing and hopefully catch more fish. So if you're ready, let's do it. Welcome to the Hookup Tackle. The Hookup Tackle is the world's largest showcase of Mega Bass products, featuring baits and colors not found at any other dealer. The Hookup also offers a wide display of OSP, Evergreen, Depths, Lucky Craft, Jackal, and many more. The Hookup Tackle is owned and operated by family is staffed by guides and verified tackle nerds who love helping anglers elevate their craft. If you're in the Phoenix area, we'd love to have you stop by our showroom and check out the wonderful world of Mega Bass and the hookup for yourself. If you shop online, there are almost 10,000 SKUs of Mega Bass products alone with hundreds of other companies and new products being added daily. So next time you're looking for that hard to find bait, that color your fish have never seen before, or maybe you just wanna elevate your game, look at thehookuptackle.com. All right, welcome back my friends. I am Ben with The Hookup Tackle, AKA The Tackle Otaku, being joined by my buddy, Jeffrey the King. We are The Hookup Tackle USA. So today we are gonna break down Mega Bass swim baits and we're gonna show you exactly what we are using to rig them, the exact hooks, everything, so that you guys can hopefully see how we're using them and maybe it will I don't know, expand your horizons, but at least have a starting point to know with confidence, okay, this hook fits this bait, and this is how I can use it. Sound good, Jeff? Yeah. All right, so let's start, let's start small, and then we'll work our way up. So we're gonna be talking today about, you know, paddle tail swim baits. They're gonna come unrigged, things like the Hazardong Shad, Spark Shad, Magdraft Freestyle, right? Where you buy the bait, and then you have to figure out what the fuck to do with it basically, right? How do I rig this thing? So let's start with the smallest one and work our way up. So this would be the Hazadong Shad. Now, Hazadong Shad is available in a three inch size and it is also available in a 4.2 inch size. Now the Hazadong Shad is a little thinner body than say a Spark Shad, right? So it's gonna be a little more finessey it's gonna be a little tighter moving. So when most people think of the Hazardong Shad, especially the three inch size, they think drop swim. Now, a few years ago, you know, Chris Aldane made the drop swimming technique really popular. He posted about it. Guys have been jacking them on this thing for years, especially smallmouth. I mean, if you live around a smallmouth, there's no question that you're drop swimming the three inch Hazardong Shad. And basically what that means is you're basically rigging it on a drop shot and instead of you know kind of shaking it like you would a worm you're basically throwing it out there and you're kind of just dragging it around and this is swimming up above the bottom right so let's start there okay let's start with the drop swim so obviously you're going to need a hook to do this with right so this is usually you know the starting point for us is usually one of these three hooks either the decoy shot rig worm 10 the Mosquito Light or the Decoy Big Bite. Now, all of these will work well, just depending on you know which hook you like. You know, hooks are kind of like line, right? They're kind of a personal thing, right? You, you end up having a bad experience one day with something and then you give up on it and you go somewhere else, right? Or you just have amazing success with something, so you just stay there. These are all hooks that we've had amazing success with and we've actually solved a lot of those bad days for guys by switching them to these hooks. So any of these would be a good idea. As far as sizing goes, you wanna to try to match it as close to this guy as you can. So I'm usually in a size two or three is where I go. If you feel like you're just not getting enough hook, you can bump up to a one, but you don't want the hook to be too big on this or you're gonna take away the effectiveness, okay? So I'm gonna start with a size three, is what I'm gonna do. I'll read this really quick for you guys and show you what we're doing. 
The second thing you're gonna need is you're gonna need a weight, a drop shot weight. This is 90% I mean, of the time my starting point, just a simple quarter ounce or 3 8 ounce depending on how deep it is, or I might even go to a 3 16 ounce if I need it to go really shallow and really light. But quarter ounce gets me through probably 90% of my drop shot needs. The majority of the time, I just stay in lead. I find that a drop shot, you know, you, you plow through weights. So the only time I'll really go to tungsten for myself is when I'm vertically fishing, I need it to get down really quick so I can get a more dense weight that basically doesn't kind of flutter and catch in the water, it just sinks really fast. But anytime I'm kind of casting out and dragging it around, I find just the simple quarter ounce, these are the hookup tackle, drop shot weights, they're inexpensive for a big pack, work great, okay? All right, so basically what we're gonna do on this thing is you are going to tie whatever knot you use. I'm still like super old school, I still do the Palomar. I love the Palomar, Palomar gets a bad rap, but if you tie the Palomar correctly and you just make sure that everything's lined up before you tighten it, it works great. And maybe we can do a line tutorial too and I can walk through that, okay? I usually just use the clip drop shot weights, it doesn't matter, you can use the tie-in ones as well. If you use the clip weights, what I usually do is I usually just clip it on, right, obviously. And then a lot of people will tie a knot. I usually just bring that tag end back through and clip it a second time. So I usually just kind of double clip it and I find that that keeps it snug enough, but if it really snags, it'll still give it some slip. So that'll prevent it from you know, flying off during the cast or something like that. But I'm generally looking for something like a 10 to 12 inch starting point on the drop swim. And then basically all we're gonna do here is we're just gonna rig this right through the head. All right. And so there we go. And you can see that size three is like the perfect size for that bait. It's not too big. Size two works great as well. So usually that's my starting point. But this way now the bait is basically a foot off the bottom and it's just gonna kind of swim right through the fish's zone versus being on the bottom or dragging around or bouncing around. So that is the drop shot or drop swim technique. So that's the number one way that we're throwing the smaller, the three inch Hazadong shad. Okay, next way that we rig the Hazadong shad, I find that the Hazadong shad is a really effective finesse swim bait. When they start feeding on fry or really tiny stuff, the Hazadong shad can be a great imitation. So one of the ways that we like to fish it is just with a weedless hook, like a bladed hook. Now this is a technique that's only really become possible the last couple of years thanks to Zapu. So Zapu makes these great hooks. This is the Zapu Bready hook. So there you go. And what's dope about it is they make them in a size three and in a size two. So they make these smaller hooks that are small enough to fit these tiny little baits. But you know, when you start seeing a bunch of fry and little bait in the shallows and they're around stick ups and stuff, I can easily take this, toss it out and fish this the same way you would a larger five or six inch swim bait, only it's really finessey. So I find the size two to fit perfect on the three inch Hazadong. So that guy, it's available in a Colorado blade and a willow. So you can just kind of match. You want more flash, less flash, more vibration, less vibration. I find in this size that I don't overthink it. I don't think it makes that big of a difference. I catch them both ways. I find when they get super, super picky, the Colorado sometimes can be better because it's even smaller flash, it's less light putting out there. But Willow is generally the standard. But this is just a great way to fish the bait shallow and really finesse and quicker through a bunch of weeds and snags and in that shallower zone. And then the last way that I will fish the three inch Hazadong is just on a simple ball head. Okay, so, you know, Kitek makes a great tungsten ball head. They make it in a bunch of different hook sizes from a three-aught all the way to a, you know, really tiny size three. I find the size two or the size one fits the three-inch Hazadong really, really well. This is a bait that I will use more in open water. So if you're getting fish that are chasing fry, for instance, right? They're popping bait out, you know, in open water and you need something to, you know, really downsize and imitate the smaller bait, but it's in open water, I find that the ball head is a great option. So, you know, very simply, this is a size one hook. You can see that it'll fit on there perfect. 
the biggest thing when you're rigging any type of jig head or you know that breedy hook is you need to make sure that that hook goes out the top of the bait perfectly straight right because these baits are really small and really subtle if there's any kink to it at all it will cause it to kind of wash out in spiral and circles but as long as you rig it straight you're going to get great movement out of it very finessey obviously this is going to be like spinning rod approach a light line you know or bfs gear i know a lot of you guys are getting into the bfs stuff as well but this is just a great simple imitation it's just incredibly natural something you can't imitate with a hard bait so that would be the other rigging for the three inch now when we jump to the 4.2 inch the 4.2 inch for me gets a little simpler i i usually only just throw it a couple different ways this is a very popular size to throw on like uh, an Alabama rig. So if a lot of you guys are looking for just different bait offerings for an A-rig, you know, the 4.2 inch is a great one because it just has a little bit more meat than the three inch, right? You can see the side by side comparison, right? It's, it's substantially larger, but it's got just a little more thickness. So it, it ends up being a good A-rig bait when you need something that's just tight. It's tight and subtle. And it's not gonna have this really big kick. For me, I very simply rig it either weedless, which is probably 99% of the time, or again, on a ball head. So again, let's talk about the weedless way, because I think that's the most effective way to do this. So, you know, there you go. Just a weighted, bladed hook. I find the hook that fits this guy the best is another Zapu hook. This is the Zapu bladed pile driver. Okay, and the reason I like this hook is it just, it the bait fits on it really well. I use the 4-aught. The 3-aught will fit on it as well. I like it to have a little bit more gap to it because where I'm gonna throw this, I'm gonna put it on heavier line when they want something a little bit smaller, but I still gotta put it in the cover. So I like to have that 4-aught. I find the 4-aught fits perfect. You can get it in a silver or a gold blade. So you can mix and match to your water conditions or what your fish are reacting to. And again, it's just gonna be a pretty straightforward swim. You're gonna get great action out of it. Fish smoke it, bunch of colors. So there you go. For me, that's, that's the majority of time on the 4.2, it's gonna go on that. The other way I will rig it is again, kind of like the three inch, just on a straight ball head. So you can, again, you can do the Kitek. Owner also makes a great ball head. Their ultra round head locked down is a great one if you don't want to do the tungsten. Sometimes I actually prefer the owner, the lead, over the tungsten, depending on how much movement I need it to get. The nice thing about the tungsten is you can get a really small footprint, right? Because the tungsten is so small. But with a round head, sometimes you want it to actually be larger because the larger it is, the more kind of rock you're going to get and the more rock you're going to get in your bait. So for me, the majority of time, I'm throwing this owner 3 sixteenths or a quarter ounce. They both come with the same hook. They're gonna be a three out hook. And again, I know it looks kind of weird with that big kind of piece right there, but you simply just kind of push it up and over that. And then that'll kind of just lock it in place. So it's on there. If you go too far into the bait, like I did just then, you can just kind of tear it back until it's there. And then that's it, okay? And then by having it on a ball head versus like a true swim bait head, what it will do is it will cause it to rock. So you're gonna have, it never really has a true keel to it. So that ball head is gonna kind of add a little bit of rock, just a little bit more movement to this bait, which I like. Now, if you don't want that, you want it to be a little bit more of a straight trajectory, then you can just get the Mega Bass Okashira head and that works great as well. But there's my riggings there on the Hazardongs. Moving on to Sparks. All right, up next in the arsenal is the Mega Bass Spark Shad. Now the Spark Shad, one of my favorite all-time swim baits. The Spark Shad's available in three sizes. There's a little guy, there's the three inch, there's a four inch size as well. And then the largest size they make is the five inch. And I use all three of them. I'll walk through kind of my presentation with them so you understand how I'm rigging them and why I'm choosing one over the other. So let's start Let's start with the smallest one, the three inch. Now, if you guys, again, if you live around a small mouth, I know you guys have these in your arsenal. What everybody probably does with the three inch spark shad is they combine it with this guy, which is the Mega Bass Okashira screw head. This is arguably maybe one of the most deadly combinations. We call it small mouth crack around here. So you put that head on that bait, a smallmouth is going to eat it. It's just a deadly, deadly combo. 
this bait was built for this head, so it's just the perfect combination, right? What makes the Okashira screw head so effective is it's an asymmetrical blade. So as it's spinning, it's grinding as well, right? So it's creating a clack, it's creating a sound the fish are gonna find, it's creating a little bit of flash as well, and it's creating a vibration that those fish react to. Now, sometimes I will throw it on just the regular Okashira head without the screw, and sometimes I'll throw it on the screw. And really it's just gonna come down to how much finesse do you want to give them, right? If the fish are really spooky, if they're in real skinny water, if they're really just super keyed in on size, I will go to just the regular Okashira head without the screw. The reason I'll do that is it eliminates that clack in that sound of that blade spinning. Because remember when that blade spins around, it's creating kind of a like a grind as it goes through that the fish are finding and they're going to seek out. But if they're in ultra, ultra skinny water and they're real spooky, I don't want that grind. I wanna keep it quiet, so then I'll go there, okay? But very simply, if you guys haven't used these before, let me open one up. Very simply, you're just gonna rig this straight through the middle. And then when you push that on, you wanna make sure on the Okashira screw head, there's a little kind of black rubber, almost bobber stop piece right there that will fit in between your bait and that blade, you wanna make sure that your bait just bumps right up against that piece, okay? You don't wanna push it too far because if you push it too far into the head, what happens is it won't spin. That blade doesn't have a chance to be what it's designed to do. So you wanna keep it back just off that black bobber stop piece and then that blade can spin and do what it wants to do. So there you go. This is the number one way to throw this bait. I don't worry about the dual eye thing. I don't think fish care. You think fish care? 100% yeah? they do. Oh, you do? Oh yeah. Oh, That's so what gets you extra bites, man. You think they want the extra eyes? Yeah. Oh, so extra eyes, extra bites. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, I you know I know it looks kind of strange. People ask me that all the time, like, what, why is there so many eyes? It doesn't fucking matter. You know what I mean? I don't think they're looking in like, oh, it can't be real. It's got four eyes. Like, it doesn't make a difference. So just I just rig it like this, chuck it, it works great. You can also put it on that same ball head, that same Kitek tungsten ball head that we did with the Hazardong Shad is another great alternative to the Okashira head when they don't want that vibration. Again, it just gives it a little bit more rock versus a true trace, right? You put on the Okashira head, it's keeled, it's going to track nice and straight. You put on the ball head, it's gonna give it just a little bit of movement because it doesn't have that true center. So a couple of different ways to throw it there. The other way we'll do it is we'll do it on that same, that same hook from Zapu, that same Zapu Breedy hook. It rigs exactly the same as the Hazadong. So it's just a great way to present, you know, a smaller profile bait when they're getting picky. Now, why would you choose a spark shad over a hazardong or a hazardong over a spark shad when they're in the three inch size? Here's the side by side comparison. And again, this is a size two on the Breedy, right? So it fits both the spark shad and the hazardong. You can see that the spark shad is a wider, thicker bait than the hazardong is, right? It's thicker all the way around. Okay, so the Spark Shad is going to have more of a subtle little rock just because of its thickness while that tail is moving. So it's kind of more of a full body movement where the Hazadong is just gonna be basically just tail. So it's just really tight back there. So more of a tighter movement, more of a full body movement, just different looks. Sometimes they react to one or they prefer the other. All right, and finally, with that little three inch dude, the last way we'll rig it is on a guppy head. Now, Dirty Jigs came out with this little guppy head a few years ago, and it's really become a very popular way to fish the little spark shad. And, you know, any little swim bait, really, for that matter. The reason that you would choose a guppy head over, say, an Okashira head or a round head or something like that is it's designed for more of a vertical approach, okay? So you can see with the guppy head that the line tie is way set back on this head. So traditionally, if it was a swim bait style head, the line tie would be on the front so that everything kind of follows the line tie. With the guppy head, it's way set back here because this is designed for a vertical approach, kind of a lift and drop type approach. So this is a great one when the fish school up especially in you know winter when they get really picky 
and they're in schools and they're not reacting to traditional size stuff. You can put it on the guppy head and you can basically fish this thing vertical now down to those fish. You see them on the graph, you're like, oh, there they are, kind of drop it down. Kind of a spoon alternative that's very natural, right? So if you need to fish something over treetops or two schools of fish, the guppy head is a great way to do it and it fits that little three inch spark shad perfectly. There you go. Okay, moving on to the four inch size. The four inch size for me is a very, this is a very simple one. I don't throw this one as much as I throw the three and the five, but it has a lot of effective, a lot of effectiveness and a lot of people prefer it over the three and the five. For me, the four inch is mainly an A-rig size for me. It's a perfect Alabama rig size. It's not too big, it's not too small. This is my go-to swim bait when the water is cold and the fish aren't moving very fast and they want that bait to just have that little subtle rock, much much more subtle than like a K-Tech Fat Swing Impact or an OSP Dole Live Shad. It's gonna really match the movement of a wintertime fish on an A-Rig. So this for me, 90% of the time is an A-Rig. Now, you don't have to do it that way. There's a couple different riggings you can do if this is matching the profile of your bait. The first way you'll see it rigged a lot is on the Mega Bass Body Balance Head. Now this head was really designed to fit a spark shad and it's designed to kind of cast out and instead of the head just making it fall, it's going to give it a swim horizontally as it falls. I prefer this rigging more for the five inch size, but a lot of people love it on the four inch. It's super effective on the four inch. So, you know, experiment with it. You might find that it works absolutely perfect for you. But that lead that comes down below is the key to this bait. So very simply, you're gonna rig it and you're gonna push it over both of those keepers right there. And then there you go. It's That's fully rigged there. And again, because that lead kind of wraps underneath the bait, it's a balanced fall. So instead of the lead head falling this way, it's going to fall horizontally. And as it's falling, that is kicking. And it looks much more natural like a bait fish kind of falling through the water versus just diving down, which nothing ever does. Okay, so there's a great rigging if you want to fish it on its own. And then again, getting back to that Zapu blading pile driver, it's an amazing one for that four inch size as well. So. For the four inch spark shad, I prefer the three aught. Okay, so we are using the four aught for the four inch hazadong, but for the four inch spark shad, the three aught is to me is a better fit. Okay, so again, I think you guys pretty much know how to use these style baits, but you just twist it on that twist and make sure you get it tight. You don't want to go ultra tight, but you want to go all the way to the line tie there. You can see the three aught really lines up perfectly with that belly slit right there. Okay, so once it's rigged, it's the perfect size for that four inch spark shed. But this will give you an option to fish in the shallower water, through skinnier water, through brush, through grass, right, without having to snag and it's super effective that way. And again, comes with silver, comes with gold. You could also use the three out owner flashy swimmer. That's another great one. I just find that the pile driver fits this bait a little bit better than the flashy swimmer, but both are good. Okay, so if you can't find the pile driver, but you can find the flashy swimmer, go with that. Majority of time for me on this size, just because we've upped the size, I'm going with a willow blade, just because I'm looking to just get that type of movement when you get to the bigger hooks, the Colorado blades get bigger and they force it to go a little bit slower through the water. So I like the willow, it just allows me to fish it a little bit quicker through stuff. But again, you can choose, you could do either way, but there you go, there's the four inch. And then finally, when we get to the five inch, this is my favorite size but I don't get to fish it as much as I fish the smaller ones because they're not always eating this bigger size bait, right? But the five inch is an amazing bait for swimming and fishing horizontally. So again, it makes a great A-rig size when they're eating large thread fins, smaller gizzards. You can absolutely throw the five inch spark shad and they smoke it on there. It gets heavy though, right? Especially if you've got five five inch spark shads, 
you're gonna have a three, three and a half ounce A-Rig by the time you're done. So it gets, it gets relatively heavy. I prefer to use it on its own and I fish it weedless probably 90% of the time, okay? So, here we go. And you know what? While we're talking about the five inch spark shed, let's just add the Magdraft Freestyle in there too. Those are the last two. So I'm gonna fish this the same way, okay? So Magdraft Freestyle, five inch spark shad. I'm gonna rig them basically with a weighted swim bait hook the same way. I pretty much use the same hooks too. So we'll, we'll talk about both, okay? All right, so for the five inch spark shad, I am either going with a six aught weighted swim bait hook. So I will either use the owner weighted beast hook or decoy has a new Makisasu Magnum weighted. Both of them are the right bend. Both of them hook the fish great. So I will either choose the weighted with no blade or I will choose a bladed one based on depth control. Okay. So if I'm fishing very shallow, I go with just the weight, no blade. Okay, and this will allow me to fish it high in the column, fish it slow, fish it shallow. This will also allow me to kill it every once in a while so I can fish it by a tree and then kill it. And as it falls, it will stay horizontal and have a very nice shimmy, almost like a Senko type shimmy. Okay, quick little tip. When I start to do the spring, I start the bait upside down. Okay, so that that way by the time it gets to the front, it's in the perfect position. If you start it upright, then it ends up being a little bit too tight, okay? So, for the non-bladed way of fishing it, I like the six on okay? This is, this is my go-to, it's enough bite, but it's also available in a light enough weight to where that nice little horizontal shimmy is very evident. Now, if I need this bait to be deeper, I need to fish it across deeper points, then I can go to an ADOT bladed hook, okay? That blade will just give me enough grip on the water that it will prevent the bait from rising. So if I take this and I throw this into 15 feet, as soon as I start winding, it's going to start coming up high, right? So this is really a shallow or high in the column presentation. If I rig it on the blade, then it's gonna force it to stay down and it's gonna keep it down in that deeper depth and let me pick apart that deeper water, okay? So, same thing on the Magdraft Freestyle, okay? If I want it to be really high, if I wanna skip with it, something like that, I go with just a regular weighted hook. And again, owner beast hook or that decoy Makisasu, eight dot for me is perfect. If I want it to stay down a little bit deeper, which is the majority of time I'm fishing the Freestyle, then I go with the bladed hook in the ADOT, okay? And I like that just because it gives me a little more versatility and a little more control over exactly the water depth and how I fish it. I can fish it fast, I can fish it slow, I can fish it deep, I can fish it shallow with the blade. And again, just kind of line it up. And there is a back slit, so just make sure it comes straight out of the bait. And then you're dialed. And I find that with these beast hooks, at first, it can be a little intimidating, especially when you're getting into an ADOT and you're like, oh my God, it's such a big hook, right? But literally, they hook them so well. It's definitely one of the best hookup ratio hooks that I've ever used, especially for a hook that size. It doesn't take much. So they bite, you put pressure on it, it has them, okay? So there you go. The go-to way for the Spark Shad and the Magdraft Freestyle. The other way you can fish the Spark Shad is of course the five inch on the body balance as well. And I find that the body balance works even better on the five inch. The body balance on the five inch is one, we've talked about this before, that we'll use for vertical presentations when the fish are suspended. So let's say you're fishing an open area or a bluff wall or something like that, and the fish are suspended maybe in 20 feet or 25 feet or 15 feet, but you're sitting over open water, 50 feet, 60 feet, I can throw it on the body balance. I can pitch it past where the fish are or up against the cliff wall and just engage my reel and just let it free fall. As it free falls, it's just going to stay, maintain that horizontal swim. And it's just gonna pendulum back down underneath the boat. And then it can reach the depth of those fish. You just gotta pay attention as it's falling, right? Just maintain contact. And it's just gonna be a little really light, right? Cause the fish are just sitting there and they're just gonna suck it in, right? 
but it's a great way to catch them, especially around cliffs and bluffs when they're suspended on the body balance. There you go. All right, guys, that is a wrap. That ended up being much more in depth than I was thinking it was going to be in the beginning. Uh, but there really is a lot of different ways that you can rig these mega bass swim baits. So if you have any questions, let me know. Jeff will leave links to all the products so you can see exactly the hook and then use this to be your guide. Use it to be your starting point. But I'd love for you to share with us as well if you're doing something different, using a different rigging that's working well on these, drop it down below so we can share and spread the knowledge so that hopefully we can catch more fish. So until next time, guys, thank you for your business and your support. Peace out. I will see you soon.